All right, guys, let's have a tough talk here, okay? I'm going to disclose up front this isn't going to be pleasant and this isn't going to be pain free for anybody involved. Right up front. But you do have to understand this as it pertains to Islam Makhlchev and what's going to be next. Because what's next for Islam gives us our biggest clue in terms of what's next for that entire division. Now, Brendan Schaub just weighed in on this. Brendan said he believes Islam's next fight should be Conor McGregor. Hold that thought. It had never crossed my mind. I do understand where Islam and Connor, if they could cross paths, would be massive. Once you work in the story of Khabib and all the stuff behind that, but you got to put that big shiny belt up for grabs. I could see where that could go down, theoretically, at least as the biggest fight of all time. I'm well aware things have to come into play, but I get that. I get what Brendan's saying. But as Brendan's saying it, because not, neither one is the champion, does that fight still work and does it work right now? Please don't tell me it's going to be a big fight. You involved Conor McGregor, the biggest star in the sport. Anyone across from him. So I'm not resisting Brendan's idea. Islam versus Conor absolutely works. What I'm talking about is that doesn't put Islam as the number one contender. Do you see the problem? Now, we were told that Khabib received a phone call from Dana telling him Makhlchev's the number one contender. I do not know that that happened. I was not there. I heard this third hand. You guys might have heard it from me, which makes it fourth hand. And the one thing I did hear Dana say is Dana said, I really want to see Islam fight Benny. Dana just set it down. He didn't say I'm going to push in this direction. He, he did say there's a reason I made that match in the first place. That's still a match I'd really like to see. Darush has seven wins. Well, let's investigate that. That's a big clue. The problem with Islam and the problem with Benny is the same problem. Islam is going to be a star, for sure. Purely geographically speaking, he has a massive community waiting to get behind him. He for sure is going to be a star. He's not right now. That's also true. He's just not. He's coming out of his shell, and we're getting more familiar with him. And golly, are we sure impressed with what we're seeing. But that's us. We're the hardcores. We know what time it is got to relate to the rest of the people before you put a guy in a main event at the top of the bill who is likely to grab your strap and now going to be headlining other shows. It gets complicated. Islam will reach absolute stardom for sure. But right now he's not, which is the same problem Benny has. Benny DeRouge has one mega fan. Me. Me. If I didn't say Benny DeRouche two and three times a week, you're not going to hear the name Benny or DeRouche two or three times a week. So when both of those guys deserve a world title fight, and the last thing you'd ever want to do as a promoter is put a world title fight that can't get featured by Sports Center, by Jim Rome, by Dan Lebito. What do you do? You sure as hell don't say, man, this I got to bite this bullet. Oh, and by the way, oh, I got to bite it twice. No. You get rid of one of the sons of bitches early. You have them fight each other. You got two bad draws. You're not stuck. You just, oh, what do I do? You put them together. Put those two duds that you'll bring in a star to fight one of them. You put a turd in there with a turd and you get rid of, you flush one of them down. That's the rule. That's the recipe. I'm just, I told you this wasn't going to be pleasant. But you don't save them for main events which have world title fights, you eliminate one of them early. You deal with your problem 50% of what the problem currently is. So it's very interesting. It does make a level of sense. Dana has never confirmed for us that I've seen that he made that phone call to Khabib. Khabib has never confirmed with us that I've seen that he received that phone call. We were told Khabib said that he received. We were told that. Could have happened, might not have. I'm a detective. I got to grab all the clues. Then I got I to vet it and decide what's right before I hedge my bet. I believe Islam Makhlchev is going to fight for a world championship. Boom. There I said it. There it is. But what I do know that Dana said is whoever the champion is, when that moment rolls around, will have a say in who his next opponent is. That's fair. That's reasonable. And we can't begin to go get that information 
because we don't know who that champion is going to be. Gaethje versus Charlie Aulis. Boy, that's a close fight. Oh, that's a close fight. DraftKings has had both guys in the last seven days as favorite. They have, they have changed. It started out Gaethje. It moved to Oliveira. I have to go refresh the page, but what I, point I'm trying to make, that's a tight one. What kind of question is that to go, hey, if you win, who are you going to fight next? Well, what are my options? How about that? I'm going to decide who I'm going to fight next. Who's available? So it is one of these thoughts that we do need to give thought to. We don't need a knee-jerk reaction. You're starting to see the brilliance and the simplicity of Dana's pocketed response, which is, let's see what happens. I like where Brendan's going. I hadn't considered that. If you have a clear number one contender, which we believe Islam is, but you could make the same argument for Darush, and then you could start to get a little more complicated of who did he beat, when did he beat him, how hard were the fights, what were the guys right? You still have some real talking points there. In fairness, you do. We have recency bias. It's very real. Islam Wachev got the last say. And the wind is blowing in that direction, but this Darush idea is certainly not a bad one. A bad idea is to take two guys that the world's not familiar with and put them both in world title fights. Makes a lot of sense why Dana said, no, you two knuckleheads, you figure it out. Whoever comes on top of it, I'll put the push behind. I can understand that. So let's take Brendan's idea, though, because I'm still on board with it. If we have what we believe to be the number one contender in Islam Michael Chip, but we're not going to give him a world title fight, we got to give him something pretty damn good. Brendan might have just solved that problem. He might have just solved that problem with McGregor. The other side to it is if we make that fight, who does go on and take on the winner? And that would leave you with Benny Darush. And I don't think that he's going to get that opportunity missing a match and coming off an injury. Tough spot. It's interesting. Match, you guys think matchmaking is easy, don't you? <laughs> matchmaking is one of the most sophisticated and complex arms of our entire industry. The Rich Chews, the Mick Maynards, the Sean Shelby's, the Joe Silvers, they will never get thanked. They will never get a print. They have one of the most deepest thought positions within this sport. It's tough. If we are not going to give Islam the world title fight, for whatever reason, come hook or crook if that doesn't happen, I do like what Brendan is saying about give him something massive. And that got tested once. That got tested with Dustin Poirier, who became the number one contender. And Dana told him, I can give you a title fight or I can give you McGregor. If you take on the title fight, it's not going to be with McGregor. If you take on McGregor, it's not going to be for the title. Dustin went with Connor, And there was no hard feelings anywhere. That made sense. The number one contender doesn't just mean he gets to fight for the belt max. It means he's next for the next opportunity, which generally the biggest one is the belt. Not always, not when Connor's there. And the more I think through this and the more I talk through this, I'm starting to see it Brendan Schaub's way. I would be left with, well, then who is next for the winner of Oliveira Gaethje? I would be left with that. But every action has an equal and opposite reaction. There's problems and conflicts everywhere we go. I think that we could work through it. I'm light on the idea. I don't think it's going to happen, but I do get where Brendan's coming from. And he makes a very good point. Islam has proved and earned the right to something very good. That doesn't have to be a title fight. Not when you've got the biggest star in the sport sitting out there. In this case, McGregor.